I'm Kalila Reynolds and welcome to another episode of Taking Stock. This is going to be a really good one, filmed right here on location at iCreate Studios on Hope Road. We're bringing you all the latest business news and telling you how it will affect you and your money. Come on, let's get this money. First up, the Jamaican flag flew high at the New York Stock Exchange last year as tribute to the country having the best performing stock exchange in the world. What's in store for 2020? We'll hear from Managing Director of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, Marlene Street Forest. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest stock market developments. Jobs numbers are up and elections are looming. What does this mean for business? But first, here's What's Hot, brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. The Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, JMEA, is complaining that members have been unable to access U.S. dollars for the past two weeks. JMEA President Richard Pandohi says some manufacturers have been forced to halt production as they're unable to pay for raw materials. The Bank of Jamaica, BOJ, says there's no foreign exchange shortage as the country's in the height of the winter tourism season. But it says there's been higher demand as retailers restock after Christmas. The BOJ says the situation will rectify itself eventually and they'll take action if needed. The Jamaican dollar opened trading this week, selling at an average $138.67 to one U.S. It's lost nearly 5% of its value since the start of the year. Jamaica's unemployment rate has hit another record low. It's now at 7.2%. The October 2019 numbers reflect nearly 30,000 more jobs than the same time a year before. According to Statin, women are getting these new jobs at twice the rate as men. The highest increase was in the category clerks, which includes some BPO workers, while public administration and defense also saw a notable increase. Jamaica is importing more and exporting less. That's according to the latest trade numbers released by Statin for January to September 2019. The island imported 4.8 billion U.S. dollars worth of goods during the period. That's 6% more than 2018's spending for the similar period. The biggest increase was on food imports, which jumped 14%. The country spent 762 million U.S. dollars importing food during that time. Meanwhile, revenue from exports fell 9% to 1.2 billion U.S. dollars. The Jamaica Observer is reporting that First Rock Capital Holdings is taking the option to upsize its initial public offer, IPO, by 53 million shares due to high take-up of the offer. This will see the capital raised increasing from 12 to 18 million U.S. dollars. First Rock is a real estate investment company. The IPO opened on January 13 and is scheduled to close on the 31st. Unions representing CIBC First Caribbean workers across the region say they're closely monitoring the bank's majority sale to the Columbia-based Jelinski Group. The unions met last week with CIBC FCIB's top executive management team to discuss the need for better communication. The Jelinski Group is paying a reported 797 million US dollars for a two-thirds stake in CIBC First Caribbean. What's Hot was brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. Taking Stock is filmed on location at iCreate Studio on Hope Road. There's a surplus of unfilled jobs in the creative industry. Kickstart a creative career with iCreate Institute. Now I'm at iCreate, I just love it. I saw where I was learning things that I could utilize in my present job. And I have all the skills to do every basic animation thing now. Jumpstart a creative career with iCreate Institute at UCC. Visit iCreateEDU.com. This segment of Taking Stock is brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agent. Insurance made easy. Welcome back to Taking Stock. It's been about five years now since the Jamaica Stock Exchange, the JSC, has just been on fire. 
But can this energy sustain into 2020 and beyond? That's what we all want to know. Well, I'm joined by the Managing Director of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, Marlene Street Forest. Welcome to Taking Stock. Thank you for having me. Clearly. First time on my new show. Oh, most certainly, I'm, but I'm <laughs> happy to be here. I'm very happy to have you. So first, let's recap 2019, because yes. you've had a very busy year there at the JSC. How many listings you had? We had 18 securities 18. listed on the JSC and raising over $18 billion wow. for companies. Wow. 18 listings, 18, 18 zero billion dollars. No, 18 billion dollars. It's an average of a billion each. Exactly. So that's fantastic. That's really amazing. What are the expectations for 2020? 2020 will be another great year. We're expecting to list over 20 securities on the market. And that is in the junior market, on the main market. We are going to be having more indices. Last year, we created two new index the financial and the manufacturing and distribution. This year, we will be creating more indices. And that, again, will propel new products and services on the market. We have just launched, as you know, we migrated to the NASDAQ trading platform. That is going to allow us, again, to offer more products and services. Um, in 2020, we will look at short selling, margin trading, futures and options. These are things that we are working on. We'll also have direct market access from here to Canada and from Canada back, which means that more persons in the diaspora will have access to all our securities. And in Jamaica, persons can have a wider portfolio of securities. So these are some exciting things we are going to be offering to the market. What it means is that there will be more energy in the market, more liquidity in the market, and more persons wanting to come on. You would have realized too that the government has indicated that they are going to be issuing three more new securities. Right. The highway, JPS, and also um, Jamaica, Jamaica Mortgage, Bank. Mortgage Bank. And again, that is going to propel the stock market to higher heights. So that five-year run, in our estimation, will continue. As long as we have more listings, more people understanding about the market, and more companies wanting to just come and take advantage of what the market offers, we will, the market will continue to grow. From what I understand, in 2019, more money was raised on the, the JSC yeah. than 2016, 17, and 18 yeah. combined. 18 listings, $18 billion. You're expecting 20 listings. So those are the ones that have already approached the JSC. Those are confirmed. 20 listings you're expecting mm -hmm. for 2020. Uh, let us put it this way. There are some that are confirmed some that the brokers are working on. So the brokers will inform the stock exchange what are the companies that, or the securities they are carrying to market. And by all account, um, we will be having uh, that many securities coming to market. So, and how long in advance do they have to tell you? Well, they normally tell us at the, um, the third to fourth quarter of the previous year, the brokers, we will ask them, we'll canvas them and say, what do, you, what do you have in the pipeline? Right. And the brokers will tell us that they have X amount in the pipeline. And they have, they're very upbeat, they're very bullish. So we know that they are working with companies to come to So them. there could be more, because oh, yes. that's just what you know of so far. Yes, precisely. Because you will have also companies that are preparing themselves to come to market, but have not yet approached a broker. Right. So that could be more in terms of listing. Can your team manage this volume? Certainly can manage the volume. From the standpoint of, now let us look on technology, the NASDAQ trading platform will manage all the secondary market activities um, for years to come. It is that robust. But in terms of our team, our team is committed. And what we do at the stock exchange, we evaluate. Do we need more resources and when? And when we need more resources, we take on more resources. Because I know I've been hearing you know, some of the complaints coming from both the public side and the company's sides. There have been delays in them wanting to list. And we know that the regulatory process is extensive. And you know, companies who want to list, entrepreneurs who want to list, they might not anticipate that it would take as long as it actually does take. But sometimes there are delays on 
perhaps, I don't know if it's the JSC's end or the JCSD. None, none of the two. No? None of the two. The JSC, we have standards in terms of when we get the information back, in terms of, for example, the review of a prospectus, and the JSE has always exceeded the standard of um, review. But it goes through various process. So it goes through the FSC, the Companies Office of Jamaica, and uh, the Jamaica Stock Exchange as one of the part of review. But we do not delay, not even as a rule, we do not delay at all in the review of our prospectors. And also listing, there's no delay either, because once our listing um, committee has said yes, that company is approved, what we do, we call quickly the members of that committee to look at approving or not, considering for approval the listing. So I must say that we do not have a delay either from the JSE nor the JCSD. Well, I'll give you an example. Yes. It might not have been JC or JCSD yes. at fault here, but one of the recent listings, mm -hmm. the, the person was complaining to me, the, the person from the business end, mm -hmm. that they were anticipating to list from October. It was delayed for a few months because somebody was sick and the person, the review couldn't be done or, or whatever that person was in charge of couldn't be done because one person was sick. Okay. And that delayed this IPO for a good two months. So well, I cannot speak to that from the standpoint of other persons right. that need or entities that need to do a review. I can only speak about the JSE group. Mm -hmm. yes. But you're a listed company as well. We are. You certainly yes. had some changes to your board. Yes. And with this increase in workload, so much activity going on, mm -hmm. you are going to need an increase in staff. You are going yeah, to need some more And as I say, people. what we do, we assess as we go along in order to add to the quota of persons that we have. But we don't ramp up if we don't need to, mm -hmm. because that's not an efficient way of handling business. Right. Yes. Even on the, the, the issue of communicating with the public, mm -hmm. for example, when you had the launch of the new NASDAQ trading platform, yes. the first couple of days there were some issues there, and members of the public were complaining that they weren't hearing from the JSC. Let us look at the NASDAQ trading platform. We migrated to that platform, and we have been in constant communication with the brokers that um, use the platform. It is not uh, the public that use, but the brokers. And in... Well, the public uses way, JTrader Pro. Yes, so let, we'll talk about JTrader Pro. But by way of uh, um, any issues we have, the, if the broker has, they communicate with us, and we try to resolve that. When you migrate to a system, there will be issues irrespective of how great a NASDAQ is or any other platform, because what you have is interfaces. So you might interface with, let us use JTrader Pro, you interface with JTrader Pro, which is not the NASDAQ platform, but another platform. Mm. And in that interface, you could have um, legacy issues, you could have an issue that even with the best user acceptance test that you do, it's not uh, shown up until there is a trade of a particular type. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, there, there were some issues and our help desk actually was there geared towards answering the, the, the questions. Now a trade, a person might have called in and have not been dealt with right away mm -hmm. because there were others in the queue. But certainly what we have done and based on the feedback that I've gotten from our staff, that has come to an end in terms of um, the issues there. But Kalila, in every migration, whether it is at the JSC or any other point, whilst you have interfaces with other platforms, you are gonna have some issues that you are gonna have to work through, and we have worked through them. If there are some small remaining issues, we are working through them as well. Mm -hmm. So, but things are, are pretty much smooth and pretty, out now. Pretty much. And are you getting much. positive the, feedback? Oh, much. Um, actually, there's no negative feedback on the platform. There would be, as I say, based on interconnections, there might have been some things that, based on the fact that the, the connections have changed, 
even where we put a big notice, let me put, put it this way, that do not enter trades until market opens. Mm -hmm. You would have investors connected to the J Trader who would have entered before that created issues mm -hmm. for the system. So again, we have to now look at how persons read instructions and we have been working with them. We have not said you should read your instruction, but we mm -hmm. have said to them, look, the instruction was there that you enter after market open, but not pre-open. Mm -hmm. Despite that, we worked through those issues with them. And we have received feedback, actually, to say that the JSE has been very responsive. Feedback by way of social media to say how responsive we have been. Now, since we're on the issue of new listings, yes. one of the things that happens when you have a new listing, you have the listing ceremony and trading begins, right. and then inevitably, in at least the ones we've been seeing lately, you hit that circuit breaker. Or all of them. All of them yes. have hit the circuit breaker. There are some people who argue that the circuit breaker rule now is obsolete, that there's no need for a circuit breaker. What do you have to say to that? No, you have to step back and say, why is a circuit breaker Tell us. rule necessary? Mm. And a circuit breaker rule is necessary in order to preserve the market. Not always information is uh, um, disseminated to everyone at the same time. And what we do is to preserve the, f the free flow, either down, or the uptick of the market. So what is necessary is for there to be a time when the market cools off, so that when the market opens again, and when I say the market, when that stock, because the circuit breaker is not on the market, it is on individual stocks. Right. So the stock may open at $10, there's a 15% um, the rule is that it can go 15% up or down in terms of trading. Mm -hmm. After that, if it goes beyond that, the, there's a halt. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the breaker means. There's a halt in trading to give a time for any information that others might not know to circulate, to be disseminated in the market, and then it opens again. One would not want a stock to be at a dollar, and by the end of a day, that stock is at one cent, mm -hmm. you know, because of something that somebody heard or, you know, there's a play in the market. So it is really more to secure and to preserve the integrity of the market and ensure that material information is widely known by all investors before that then again we open for another 15% up or down. Okay, so, so for clarity, it's 15% yes. in the first instant, yes. it cools for an, an hour, hour yes. and then you have another 15%. That is so, correct. So 30% for the in day. In any one day. It can't go up or down more than 30% in correct. one day. That That's is the correct, rule. exactly. Okay. And other markets around the world has, um, have that, whether it is on the market itself, or on individual stocks. Mm -hmm. yes. But some people think that our market has developed to the point where you don't need that protection anymore. Just let it be a free market. There are other markets who don't have a circuit breaker. There are other markets that don't have a circuit breaker. But let us look, look at the um, an international market and an index. Um, we do have on the entire market itself in, in terms of uh, um, the, um, say, the NASDAQ index. There is a circuit breaker too, but not on the individual stock, but on the entire market. Mm. So um, persons will need to research a little to find out what happens on other market. And there are circuit breakers in different ways. So a Barbados has a circuit breaker, a Trinidad has a circuit breaker, the United States on some of their index have a circuit breaker. But we have a circuit breaker and we have to have that circuit breaker to ensure and protect our investors. Mm -hmm. yes. I've heard, as you mentioned, Barbados and other regional stock yes. exchanges. The JSE is a publicly listed company. Sure. You are a business. Yes. There have been suggestions that the JSC should acquire some of these other regional stock exchanges. What do you think about that? We are looking 
more to integrate than acquire. Mm -hmm. And because all the, the countries that we just talked about, Trinidad, Barbados, in the first place, they have a special connection um, in terms of their exchange with their country. And I think the first thing that we need to look at is integration. Integration such as that there is a larger footprint of stocks, regional stocks, Jamaican, Barbadian, Eastern Caribbean, etc., trading on one market. And so if we can collaborate on that end, I think probably that will is the best approach. Okay. Well, speaking of collaboration, you have a big conference coming up this week. Tell me all about it. Okay, so we have the regional conference on investment and the capital markets. And this is our 15th staging. So 15 years we have been doing it. Um, the theme this year is the winds of change, capital innovation, and technology. Because these are the three areas that we feel will be drive that are changing really and that will be driving the growth of the capital market forward. Um, it is from January 21 to 23 at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. As of today, Monday, registration is still open? You can still registration is still open. We have quite a number of um, really good speakers and topics that we are looking at. We'll be talking about artificial intelligence in, in respect to the capital market and robotics in respect to the capital market. We'll be talking about how the capital market survive, small, the small island state survive and how the capital market can grow with that. We'll be talking about the ease of doing business because you know that um, has a direct impact on the market as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we will have very seasoned um, presenters, persons who can provide that information for the market to grow some more, we are going to be talking directly to people about wealth creation. And I can tell you, these types of events, they are networking opportunities. Oh, yes. Maybe even more valuable for the people you're going to meet at these events than for listening to the speakers and all that, that as well. That is correct. So what's the cost to attend? The full house is US $230. And then you can come one day or two days. So it is from US. That gives you access to everything. That is correct. Per person. Per person. Okay. And it is going to be good, a tremendous lineup, and we expect to see persons there to come, as you say, acquire the knowledge and also to network, make the deals as well. Mm -hmm. yes. All the best, Mrs. Street Forest. Thank you very much. For 2020. Yes. Look forward to those 20 plus new listings. This year? Yes, I, I'm sure we are going to be having those. All right. Thanks. It was a pleasure to be here. Good. After the break, we'll have your market recap and the analysts are standing by. This segment of Taking Stock was brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency. Insurance made easy. Time now for your market recap. 96 stocks traded across both the main and junior markets of the JSC for the week ending Friday, January 17, 2020. 34 advanced, 56 declined, and 6 traded firm. Nearly 156 million shares changed hands on the Jamaican dollar market, totaling nearly $548 million. Sagicor Select Fund Financial traded the most, taking up 43% of market volume. The stock lost $0.02 cents to close at $1.10. Wigton Wind Farm traded the second highest, taking up nearly 23% of market volume. The stock lost $0.01, cent, with people buying and selling 35 million shares in the company. Wigton closed the week at $0.96. Cents. And Sagicor Select Fund Manufacturing and Distribution lost $0.01, cent, with people buying and selling 7 million shares in the company. The stock closed the week at $0.97. Cents. Turning to the top advancers now, Cygnus Credit Investments' U.S. dollar ordinary shares saw the biggest gain. Its share price jumped nearly 29% to close the week at $0.18. Cents. Main Event Entertainment gained an impressive 23% to close the week at $6.37, and iCreate rose nearly 18% to close the week at $0.86. Cents. 
On the losing side now, JMMB Group 5.75% FR US dollar CR preference shares was the biggest loser, down 15% to close at $1.72. Nuts Fred Express was the second biggest loser, down 13% to close at $9.11. And JetCon also lost ground last week, down nearly 13% to close at $1.48. This segment of Taking Stock, The Analysts, is brought to you by Proven Wealth, Jamaica Money Market Brokers, and Ideal Portfolio Services. Welcome back to Taking Stock. It's time now to examine the week in business. I have with me senior business reporter at the financial Glena Neville Graham. We're also joined by financial blogger Jillian Jackson. Welcome to Taking Stock. Thank you. So glad to have both of you here for the first time. What? Yeah. Welcome to my there fancy production. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure not the last. Sure. Okay, so lots of things happening in the economy this week, but I always like to start off this segment by asking you if anything stood out on the market for you this week on the stock market. Neville, let's start with you. Certainly the way that NCB is not being shown enough love hmm. by the investing public. And, um, you know, one wonders where that is going. On one hand, those who are faithful to NCB will be happy because um, it's now time to buy. Mm -hmm. and, the stock uh, price is down to right. 180 something. Around 89. It went back up to, yeah, it went back up to 192, I think today. Today, so, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But 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 it but at one time it was 189. So it's right. a good time to buy. The other one is the the way that one word out of one investment house that is um, Jim and B saying, look, sell. Um, carob cement, uh -huh. and everybody started rushing for the door. <laughs> <laughs> so those are two things that stood out. Jillian, what caught your eye? Well, of course, the the first rock IPO after four days, they're near to reaching what their their intended share offering is. And that was. they're going so to up the offer. They had to up it, so they are going to get eight, about eighteen million US dollars in revenue. That was significant. And um, given how the market was reacting to, to what uh, they had to offer in their prospectus, so it was interesting that it only took four days for them to um, reach a closing price. So that was one. And two was an announcement today that Paymaster is going to be an option for the Trans Jamaica Highways IPO that's supposed to um, happen the first quarter of 2020. So that would be exciting for a lot of Jamaicans. There are a lot of persons looking out for that um, record-breaking IPO. It's, that's what they say it's supposed to be record-breaking. And NCB has given an option to pay for that using Paymaster. So that's, that is a pretty big deal. That makes deal. it much well, more well, accessible. In, in addition to that, you, you had a uh, proven coming out with, with their, their pro IPO, IPO. Yes. and Platform. they will be one of the persons, the, the set of people who will act as vendors and certainly that will be a boon for the, not only the market, yeah. but certainly for the IPO. And NCB is so. also making it easier through their Go IPO pa platform right. to open an investment account. If you're mm -hmm. already a client, yeah. you can just go, go IPO and open your account that way. So there's really a lot of movement to, to make sure that Trans Jamaica does what the government aims for it to do. Exactly. A lot going on there indeed. I see that happening very easily. Um, everybody is waiting on Trans Jamaica Highway. It's a sure moneymaker. And, um, and the French, I'm pretty sure, after being thoroughly chastened, mm -hmm. are anxious to sell. So, so that um, it's a nice way to package this uh, to, to after the public. It's a public utility. It will always be used, it will always be there. And so for the long haul, certainly, um, people will be looking to buy. Well, I tell the people have been in my inbox, like, <laughs> I don't know what, asking, when Trans Jamaica coming? When I'm like, I'm not the government. I don't know when it's coming. Yeah, the last people that, are excited that, about it, yeah, that, especially that, because of how Wigton performed last year. Yeah. So people are using that as The a last I spoke to the finance minister, which was in late December, he said that they would have completed the, the buyback of the highway okay. in, before the end of the year. And then after that, it's just to, to do the IPO. So... Any day now, we could expect to hear yeah. an announcement. We don't there, know. there were a number of, of like, like fits and starts because NCB itself, NCB cap markets gave certain signals to the to the shall we say underground um, 
that they were coming out any time now. And any time now has been since what, about November? <laughs> From last year. We Tear tend to hear that a lot with IPOs. IPOs. They always say, any day no, any day no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah, but, um, you know. The regulations and all mm. the, every, every T has to be crossed, every I has I to be dotted. It tends to take a lot longer than people might expect. But let's turn to some developments in the economy, because there were some big announcements on Friday. Staten had a press conference, so we saw the labor force survey results coming out, mm -hmm. and we saw the latest inflation, inflation numbers coming out. Let's start with labor force. So now we're at 7.2% unemployment level, the lowest in history. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's very good. But, but uh, I sense the butt coming. Yeah, I know, uh -huh. I know, I know, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to pull any punches here uh, because a lot of those jobs have to do with those um, lime green shirts that you saw cleaning the roads. Remember how the, the, the numbers are computed? You know? It's computed of those who are who are actively seeking jobs. Oh, but it said they added 17,000 clerks. That's not people cleaning the road. Those are office jobs. Ah, uh, well, I hear you. I hear you. And they said that the largest increase in employment was women. Women getting jobs twice, twice as fast, fast as men. As mm -hmm. And um, adding to the working poor. But then oh. I'd be writing another hobby house. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what do you make of it, Jillian? I think it's always good when unemployment goes down. I mean, you know that it would have a ripple effect. More persons with jobs, more money to be pumped into the economy. And it would just be more exciting if the jobs were, you know, more highly skilled jobs. But we have to start somewhere. So starting with improving the, the, jo the job sector for the lower employed will have an effect pushing up. Um, skills and ability to perform at a higher level throughout the entire economy. And mind you, my, my butt was pretty personal. Uh -huh. you know, <laughs> but so, so, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not knocking the fact that we're, we're at historically low levels and that um, it, it's, it's, it's not to sniff at that you've added um, 17,000 um, entry level jobs. Mm -hmm. for, it's 20 odd thousand in all that they've added yeah, so, over various categories. So, so we're not quarreling with that at all. All I'm saying though, it is not the greatest thing to say, and listen to me carefully, mm -hmm. it's not the greatest thing to say that, look, we've added 17,000 clerks when you know that Jamaica has one of the highest levels of income disparity in the world. This is true. Right, so it's, it's I mean, you're talking about a clerk earning sub $1 million per year, and some of our CEOs earning not millions, billions. Yes, yes, there is at least one CEO who earns in excess of a million. I will say much more about Ooh. that. Mm. Let me try to find, bring up some of the other categories. It says the second highest increase was for service workers and shop and market sales workers. Mm -hmm. And then you also had by industry group, public administration and defense, and then there was a decrease in people working in agriculture, hunting, forestry, and fishing. And the largest increase for men was in public administration and defense. And I'm not sure what defense means, so that's the security <laughs> the, industry. The security forces, the, the, the police yeah. and the GDF presently have their largest intake ever. Right now, I think it's about 750 that are at Newcastle right now. You have Train, another yeah. set at uh, Monique. So the government is hiring. Yeah, the, government the public is hiring. administration and defense would cover government workers, right, right, public sector workers. Right. But again, as, as I say, um, what we want to be added are quality jobs. And by quality jobs, I mean those that are not paying just above minimum, minimum wage. wage. Right. And that's, that's a sad reality with a lot of jobs. That but for somebody paid. without a job at all, it's Any job is better than no job. It's a start. Yeah, yes. it's a start. Let's talk about the other bit of data that just came out from the BOJ and Statin. That was the inflation rate. So inflation for December came in at 6.2%, Jillian. So we're now above the band that they have been targeting. What do you make of that? They said that it was largely contributed to an increase in the cost of food. So agriculture prices went up and the cost of electricity. So 
I don't know if it's too much to worry about now because they anticipate that it will go back down. So the food prices rise in late December last year because, you know, demand during the Christmas time. But they expect that those prices will go back down and we'll be back within the target by March or so. That's what I, I think the, will the, happen. The, the thing I'm fretting about, though, is the fact that it seems like we're going back into the cycle of um, the Jamaican dollar losing its value market appreciation of the Jamaican dollar. And um, it's lost, what, about 3% mm -hmm. um, since the start of the year? Three or four, yeah. Uh, um, give or mm -hmm. take. Yeah. Um, last check must have been about $137.62. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not something you want to be happy about because it's getting back to the 142s and 143s. But I think what's even more troubling than the rate to me is the fact that you have the Manufacturers Association saying it's not That's available. Not there you go. That would, would be my next point, Richard Pandui coming to say, no, look, we can only get as much as, only as much as 10,000 US dollars. That's not helping my business at all. Unavailability is very troubling. Yes. And, and they're um, being told by the BOJ, just wait it out. Things are going to improve over time. But and, if you and, have and, immediate needs, mm -hmm. that right, doesn't no, no, work but, for you. But, but, but the problem I have with the whole scenario, I'm believing the, the Bank of Jamaica, you know, because they're talking about bringing in 43 million in terms of purchases and only about 30 odd million dollars going out mm -hmm. in in terms of sales so gap yeah, there's about 10 million dollars it means that the NIR should be growing it means that there's there's extra I do suspect though like Hugh Johnson of the Small Business Association said that it is pointing to some sort of hoarding of foreign exchange right. and there are those persons who will say no look um, the dollar went to as high as 140 enough um, the other day. I see it going back there, and let me just buy up some dollars now while Especially I can. Especially now because of the unavailability. Uh, exactly. That would be my natural it. next step. If I'm a business owner and I can't get US dollars, as soon as I can get some, I'm going to keep it yeah, yeah, for yeah. a rainy day. But, but it, Julian, so you're, so you're, you're in financial circles. What's going on? Because the BOJ said the NIR is increasing. We are taking in more money. It's tourist high season. So we're getting the US dollars, but for some reason the end users aren't getting aren't them. Getting. Why not? I, I don't know exactly what's happening. I know the demand is definitely greater around this time because businesses are going to restock after the Christmas holidays. So the demand is just really there. I, I don't know what's really happening in the financial circles though, why it's not being passed on to the end users. There probably is gonna be some intervention soon to get it mandated to be passed along to the users. The language coming from the BOJ didn't sound like an intervention was coming. The language was like, just hold on, no, no, just wait. I, I think, well, at first they, they would need to calm down the market to say, look, they're, 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 there's enough for everyone. Don't get greedy now, guys. And quietly they may say to some guys, now look, we, we understand that you might be wanting to speculate on the dollar. Just be aware that we can burn you. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd quietly say that, yeah. not publicly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to thank you both for your contributions. Really appreciate hearing your voices. You can check out Jillian's blog, financialsensibility.com. And you can find Neville Graham, of course, in the Gleena, the Financial yeah, Gleena. The Financial Gleena and my program, The Exchange. Oh. <laughs> on TVJ and JNN. All right. Yeah, man, throw your plug out there. <laughs> I have no problem with it. Thanks for having us. Thanks. OK, good. Well, we take a break. And we'll be back with more here on Taking Stock. Taking Stock, The Analysts, was brought to you by Proven Wealth, Jamaica Money Market Brokers, and Ideal Portfolio Services. That's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram as well, at Kalila Ray. That's also my handle on Twitter. Check out my other features, Money Mondays JA, Money Moves JA, and What's In It For Me. I'm Kalila Reynolds. See you next time.